NFL Division Preview presented by Canva. The Kansas City Chiefs, of course, losers in the last Super Bowl. They made some changes to their offensive line in the offseason, which means it could be a huge bounce back season for Pat Mahomes and company. And here to talk about that and the rest of the AFC, the two time Super Bowl champ Ryan McFadden, former quarterback Danny Cannell, and the man with the plan, sports lines analyst Emery Hunt. Uh, BMAC, what's your biggest storyline here in this AFC West? Uh, the most talked about quarterback not named Pat Mahomes was Justin Herbert. That's the biggest storyline for me in this division. Will Justin Herbert avoid that sophomore slump? Oftentimes, we see second-year players, especially second-year quarterbacks, go into a bit of a slump in their second campaign in the National Football League. People are ready to anoint him as the next great quarterback, deserving so because he plays so well. But if he hits that slump, the likelihood of them having a playoff caliber year is not likely. If he plays well, I can easily see this division having two teams get into the postseason play. He has the arm talent. He has the mobility. He has the toughness. His cerebral game is on point. He has everything you would want a quarterback to have. And because of that, we're ready to say he's the next great one. But like I said, year two for some players could be a very, very difficult year, especially when the expectations get higher. So will Justin Herbert avoid that sophomore slump? It's a great storyline, but I think this division is going to become, are, are the Chiefs the new Patriots, which essentially they are. Because remember forever, you look at the AFC East and you just say, you just throw in the towel. Patriots are going to win the division. I feel that's where we are with the Chiefs. Jeremy mentioned some of the issues they had in the Super Bowl with the offensive line. What do they do? They adjust that. They go make the signings necessary to protect their investment in Patrick Mahomes. I think the dominance continues, and I think yet again this team reigns supreme in this division. It's going to be who can knock them off is going to be the other storyline, but this is the new Patriots in the AFC West. I'm going to be looking at the Denver Broncos and can their quarterback situation get them to the playoffs? Because if you hand this Broncos roster, to Pat Mahomes, he goes to the Super Bowl with it. You hand it to Russell Wilson, goes to the Super Bowl with it. This is a playoff-ready roster with a lot of talent on both sides of the ball, but they're uncertain at the quarterback position. Can whoever is going to be, Bridgewater or Locke, get these guys through the AFC West and into the playoffs? All right, Chiefs are heavy favorites to win the division here. I, I think everybody agrees that it's the Chiefs, right, BMAC? No question. Yeah, I'm going chalk. It's the Chiefs. Fair enough. Let's go to the AFC North, another division that could be a dogfight to the end. This was the only division that had three playoff teams last season, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Cleveland. Each team has made some adjustments in the offseason. What's the biggest storyline in this division for you, Danny? All eyes are going to be on Lamar Jackson. You know, the former MVP last year wasn't quite as dominant as he was just a couple years ago. And I think the pressure is going to be on him to step up and prove, hey, because there's a narrative going around that the defenses have figured him out or have figured out a way to at least slow him down somewhat. He still had 26 touchdowns and nine interceptions last year and still was running rampant all over teams. But the thing that frustrates me as a Lamar Jackson fan, the Ravens haven't given him an, a weapon to work with. So you're going to see essentially the same personnel around him, but yet try to take him to, uh, to make that next step. So I think all eyes are going to be on Lamar Jackson and the evolution of him as a quarterback. Can he take that next step and uh, as a passing quarterback? Will, will the Bengals have done enough this offseason to protect Joe Burrow? And if we're judging by what we're reading coming out of training camp, it, it, either the Bengals have the 85 Bears defense or that offensive line is still an issue right now for Joe Burrow. So they had an opportunity to take Panay Sewell in the draft and, and re really work their draft that way, building up front. But We'll find out if they've done enough in off-season uh, free agency or even in the draft to help Joe Burrow out. Whoa, you guys are both wrong. There's only one big storyline in the AFC North. Will the Browns live up to the expectations? It seems like it's been 100 years since the Browns were expected to compete for a championship, uh, to have a championship-like run. But guess what? That's what people are saying this season because they have put together a well-assembled roster. They've drafted well. These players are developing within the system, and they become more consistent. And because of that, everyone is jumping on the Cleveland Browns train. So the expectations are not just about competing in the division. People believe this team can compete for a Super Bowl. So will they be able to uh, handle the pressure and live up to the expectations? Because like I said, it's been a, over 100 years since anybody believed that Browns could do anything noteworthy in the National Football League. But this year, 
Many people believe they can't. Yeah, the dog pound do believe in their Cleveland Browns this year. Josh Allen's breakout year last year in his partnership with Stephon Diggs elevated the Bills back into prominence over in the AFC East. And it was at the expense of the New England Patriots who had one of their worst seasons in the last quarter century. Bill went crazy in free agency. Then there's Miami and the Jets. They're also worth a mention here. What's the biggest storyline in this AFC East, Danny? You mentioned it right there when you said the, Pat, the Patriots went crazy in the, in the offseason, which is very uncharacteristic for them, going on a spending spree. And I think it was all about Bill Belichick watching his former quarterback celebrate in Tampa a Super Bowl while he went 7-9. and nine. These two are going to be compared as long as Tom Brady is playing and thriving. It's going to be who meant more to the dynasty. So that debate will rage and if the Patriots are able to get back in the scene, if Mac Jones takes over and Cam Newton is not the starter, then it rages on and it becomes even more. But if he doesn't, if they struggle, then man, does it look like Tom Brady had a, bitter, uh, a bigger impact on the dynasty that was in New England. So that, to me, is a major storyline in this division. Well, my biggest storyline, I'm going to jump on I-95 and head south. I'm going right down to Miami, to the Miami Dolphins. The biggest storyline with the Miami Dolphins Will Tua Tunga Vailoa be able to show that he can and he will be a franchise quarterback for their organization? It seems like every time Tua has a bad practice, he throws a, a, a interception or two interceptions. It becomes public information. He's been criticized so much for throwing interceptions in practice. I've never seen that from a starting quarterback. We know the talent is there. Some people question his mental toughness, but we know he has the skill set to be a franchise like quarterback. And they believe he can be a franchise quarterback, but they're just waiting to see that happen. So will he be able to show the organization, you know what, I can be that franchise-like quarterback? Because you look at some of the other young quarterbacks in the National Football League, you don't question can Justin Herbert be a franchise quarterback for the Chargers. You don't question can Joe Burrow, who had an injury uh, that hampered his season, you don't question can he be a franchise quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. But why, why will people, why are people questioning can to a tongue of I lower be a franchise quarterback for the Miami Dolphins because they are not quite sure he can, he can become that guy. So that's the biggest storyline for me. I want to know if how good can the Jets be in the first year of Robert Sala? Last year, I don't think the Jets were as bad as their record indicated. We saw them play better down the back stretch of the season. And now you had a defensive minded head coach. They bought in some really good players up front defensively. So the defense should be better. And I like what they've added on offense. You have Zach Wilson, a guy that can create all script. You have Michael Carter, the tailback, who I, who I already said was one of the best backs in the draft. He was my number two back going into the draft. And so they have enough pieces on offense with Corey Davis and all those weapons they added on the outside. How good can they be in year one with the new coach and a stable situation for the franchise? Okay, so Buffalo the favorite to win the division again with a coin flip between New England and Miami. And looking at the picks, I mean, all you guys are on the Bills here. I hope Bill Belichick is not watching this because this is the perfect position that he likes to be in. Danny, why the Bills over the New England Patriots given what they did in the offseason? To be clear, in that debate I mentioned, Tom Brady had way more to do with the dynasty than Bill Belichick. So that's where I stand, and that's why I'm going to go with the Bills. I think they're going to struggle to find consistency at quarterback. And if it's Cam Newton trying to kind of resurge his career, if it's Mac Jones and a rookie, I don't love the quarterback, even with all the pieces they put around him. So give me the Bills. This team, and Josh Allen is special. I was not a big believer. I needed to see consistency. It was a little bit erratic. Well, he delivered that last year. And the addition of Stephon Diggs absolutely was a massive role in that development. But I think he's, he's not looking behind. He's not looking to the past. He's looking to the future. Was in the MVP race last year. And Sean McDermott has built a roster that is built to win and built to win now. So I think this team wins the division. And I don't think anybody else in this division really comes close to them. All right, lastly, let's talk about the AFC South. Indianapolis could be without their quarterback for the opening month or more. Jacksonville have a rookie under center, Trevor Lawrence. Deshaun Watson may play for the Texans. I mean, he's been injured the last couple of practices. And then there's Julio Jones and the Titan. Some really good storylines to follow here. BMAC, what's the one that, that you're going to be keeping the closest eye on? Biggest storyline for me. Will the training camp injuries hijack the Colts season? I mean, they just lost Carson Wentz. They lo just lost Quentin Nelson. I mean, last time I checked, they had a pretty healthy day today, I think. They didn't lose any player, but it seems like every other day they're holding their breath in regards to a top flight-like player. 
So these training camp injuries will go into the regular season, but will they be able to weather the storm until those two players are back in uniform? I don't know because it's safe to say with a healthy team, that's not just a playoff team. Many people believe the Colts could be a team that could make a deep, deep playoff run because of the structure, because of the balance, and because of the talent they added at the quarterback position with Carson Wentz working with Coach Frank Wright. But now seeing what's happening in training camp, these injuries could hijack their successful season. And if that's the case, it will open the window of opportunity for another team. I think one of those teams, maybe. Now, I don't have – I'm not going to go that far and say they win, but the Jacksonville Jaguars, I, I think the story of the year is going to be two of the biggest brands in college football. Urban Meyer is a coach with what he did at Florida and Ohio State, and then Trevor Lawrence, what he did in his career at Clemson. These guys were two of the biggest brands in the history of college football. Now they're paired in Jacksonville. So you've got the question of a number one overall pick, and you've got Urban Meyer, who's never coached at the NFL level. Level, How is he going to make that transition? So I think there are going to be a lot of eyeballs on Jacksonville, but if they don't win a couple games early, we'll forget about it because we always do with that market. But I think they're going to be very intriguing to see if they can rustle some feathers this season. Can the Houston Texans be competitive? Uh, if you're David Culley, you have to feel bad for him, man. Like, you get your first opportunity to be a head football coach in the NFL. You think you have a franchise quarterback, one of the top five quarterbacks in the game. He comes out and says, I'm not playing for Houston ever again. Man, and now so you look at all the turnover with the free agents and you only had a third-round draft pick and you take you had to take a quarterback who was not that good in college. So it's a lot to deal with. If they win five games, he deserves coach of the year by far. So I just want to know if Houston can be competitive with all that turnover and all that turmoil that they have out there on their roster. And over here in this division, I mean, everybody here is taking the Titans again, all kinds of agreement. But, I mean, how big is the gap here between the Titans and everybody else, Emery? Consistency. We have no questions about Tennessee. They have the best run game. They have big rod receivers like legitimately A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. Ryan Tannehill is fantastic as a bus driver. Uh, and just guiding the offense. And defensively, they should be better with Bud Dupree getting out there. I like Caleb Foley drafted. So there's not that many questions about Tennessee. So with the, the way this offseason has gone and training camp has gone for the others, you got to put them atop the, the list. Gentlemen, great stuff. The NFC, AFC taken care of. Now we're going to get to the good stuff next. We're going to get some league picks coming up after the break. First, let's recap their picks for the AFC. All in agreement on Buffalo winning the East on Tennessee winning the South, and on Kansas City winning the West. Two agreements here in the, a in the AFC North. Emory and BMAC like in Baltimore. Danny stepping out, going with Cleveland. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.